Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another video. This time it is Underrated, Undervalued, Part 5. So, let's get started. Starting off with this one. Long shot number one. An X-Men character, a popular X-Men character in the 1980s. You could get this book for high grade really cheap. I think it's a little undervalued, for sure. And along with that, long shot number three. The first appearance of Mojo. I think that's a... I think Mojo is a great character, and it would be nice to see Mojo brought into the Marvel Cinematic Universe when it comes to uh, the X-Men. It would be interesting to see. Some people are like, why? Why would you want to see Mojo? Because I'm tired of seeing the same villains over and over again. I, don't want, I mean, I know we're going to see Magneto. We should see Magneto, but I want to see some different villains. And sometimes I just don't necessarily want to see the main, the, the real popular ones. I want to see some of the villains that are off, you know, off the radar. I don't think Mojo is that big of a villain, but I do think that he would make a very interesting character and an interesting entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I still think that some people don't pay attention to this book as much. It's pretty cool. I remember I, I bought that um, back when I first started collecting, and that was one of the books I really wanted. Labyrinth number one. <laughs> no, this is not a book that you're going to be able to... Uh, stockpile and cash out one day. No. The reason why I put it in this video is because I think it's not that easy to come by. Sure, you'll see them on eBay. Sure, you may see them every now and then at a com. But I don't think it's as common to find. It's especially in high grade, which this one is. So if you see this one, I do think it's a little... It's hard to say if it's underrated because I don't think it's necessarily something that should be really sought out, but it's pretty cool to have. I hated the movie, and I still hate the movie to this day. Um, never really a big David Bowie fan. My wife is, but not me. But it's still a pretty a pretty cool book to find if you could find, you know, a pretty good book to have if you could find it. Yeah, the, the, all of them, I think, are a little hard to find. How many is it? Four issues? Three issues. Yeah, the, some of them can be a little tricky to find. Here's another one. Um, Nothing about movies or anything like this, uh, or anything like that. What is this? This is Witchblade number 10. First appearance of the darkness. Now, the darkness, it's a character. What's his name? Uh, I forget his name. Off the top of my head, but uh, I can't remember his name. But I knew, I do know that the character, uh, who is you know, it's almost like a hybrid with the darkness that uh, takes over him, He's pretty important in the Witchblade universe, and he had two games that came out oh, about a decade ago, a little, little less than a decade ago, based on the character, so he must be pretty cool, so I do think it's a little underrated. And with that, also this one right here, Psyblade She, number one, there's there's a bunch of them, Battle for the Independence, I have them all, I just figured I'd show this one, I don't want to show all four of them, but first appearance of Witchblade, pretty cool. John Byrne's Next Men number one. This is the first color appearance of Hellboy. In the last video, I talked about Hellboy one. And this is another one that you know it's not necessarily cheap. You're not going to find it for twenty bucks, right? Um, a high grade copy is going to cost you well over a hundred dollars. I think it's worth it for a really cool character. And uh, sometimes I don't think this one really gets as much. Um, credit as it should, uh, compared to the Dime Press 4 and the San Diego Comic Con Comics number 2. A few more here. Kamiko Primer number 5. This is the first appearance of uh, Max the Hare. Um, another one of those independent type characters. Uh, you don't really see that much of the character. But I still think it was a pretty cool character in the 90s and, you know, maybe a little underrated. Now, some of you may disagree with me with this one, but just hear me out. Amazing Spider-Man 100. Yes, it can be pricey. Absolutely. But I think that it's not necessarily, um, I don't think it's uh, undervalued. But it just might be a little underrated because it truly was a milestone. You know, it's always a milestone whenever uh, a series gets to 50 or gets to 100. And um, I do think it has that going for it, plus this awesome cover. Yes, I think a lot of people on, agree that this cover is awesome, but I still think that, there, that this book is still a little underrated. It's a really great addition to the collection. And it was also in this book where Spider-Man grew his uh, extra arms. So that was really cool. Here's another one. 
Grendel number one. It's a rare book. I mean, I, 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 I use that term loosely. I don't mean to say it's rare, like, oh my god, super rare. Because I don't think it's super rare, but I, I do think it had a low print run. And it's the first appearance, uh, no, excuse me, no it's not. It's the first time the character Grendel had his own series. Now, I remember the character Grendel was pretty popular for a while. And uh, I like the character. I've always liked the character. And this book sometimes, you know, is a not always the easiest to come by. I'm not saying it's impossible to come by, but I do think it's a little underrated. Here's one. I got an EC for you. Vault of Horror 37. I think this is underrated for two reasons. I personally think, you know, when everybody talks about the hanging covers, we talk about shock suspense stories number five. We talk about crime suspense stories. I think it's number 20. You know, the close-up of the guy hanging and all that stuff. I personally think, now this is my own opinion, maybe some of you will agree, this is, I think is one of the best hanging covers in, in, in the EC library. Just the angle and the way it looks, I think it beats the other two easily. I know, like I said, the Crime 20 tends to be the most popular one where you're up, you know, you're up close and personal with, the, with the, uh, the guy who's being hanged. I just don't think that one is as good as this one. I just don't. That's number one. Number two reason why I think it's a little underrated and, it, and some people forget about this, it's the first appearance of Drusilla, the ball keeper's, I guess, little, I don't know, helper or whatever it was. She just never spoke. Um, she had like, almost like a little bit of a vampire thing going on. Not as creepy as vampire, just sort of stood there. It's her first appearance. And first appearances in the EC universe are, you know, there's not too many of them. You got Moon Girl, you got Crypt Keeper, Vault Keeper, Old Witch, and uh, maybe a few others, I don't know. But Drusella is one of them. So I think this one is a little underrated. And it's not that expensive. It really isn't. Try getting, uh, compare the price of this, you know, a decent grade, 5.0, 6.0, to a 5.0, 6.0 of Crime 20. Big difference. And the last one for this video that I think is a little underrated, Forever People number one. This is the first full appearance of Dark Side. But I don't, it's not the one that a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people like it, right? You know, I'm not saying no one likes it. That's, that's just silly. A lot of people like it, but I, the one that everyone goes for, the one that everyone goes for is Jimmy Olsen 134. And that is barely a cameo of Dark Side. But that seems to be the one that everyone goes for. And I think that one, because of that, for the, the, the people that have just such an intense desire to get that book, because that exists, it overshadows his full appearance here. It's almost like the reverse with uh, Wolverine. Everybody wants Wolverine's first full appearance in 181. And that overshadows his actual first appearance in 180. Now, here's an example where the first full appearance is not as valuable as the cameo. That's that's an odd thing, right? But I do think it shares the same thing with the Wolverine where one of them is so... Um, and it's not like a second appearance or anything like that. It's just so overpowering. The other one is sort of left out in the dust. And I think forever people, sometimes number one is sometimes left out in the dust. Thank you all for watching. And stay tuned. There will be more of these in the future. Take care.